Tenkara rods have this quality where the more you fish with them, the more they reveal themselves to be so effective at so many styles of fishing. Dry flies, for example, are one of the best uses for Tenkara rods on small streams. And nymphing on a tight line offers unparalleled sensitivity and ability to put fish in the net. One style that I've never really explored, however, is a dry dropper rig. Something about losing the direct connection to the fly has always seemed like a poor idea. That direct connection, after all, is one of Tenkara's main inherent advantages. But I'm not completely stubborn. I can see some scenarios where a dry dropper rig could be the best option. So today, I'll challenge myself by fishing with a dry dropper setup exclusively. Will this work out terribly? Or will I learn a thing or two and add a new technique to the toolbox? Thanks for watching another Flicky Flies film. First fish of the day here. It's a beautiful spring morning. I think the fish are gonna be hungry. There we go. Gorgeous fish. Well, my goodness, a couple casts in and uh, already onto a beautiful, incredibly detailed, patterned up, colorful rainbow. That is an awesome way to start the day. And there is another fish right off the bat, right there, the very next cast. I've got a uh, relatively large kind of parachute Adams style dry on, and below that, a little uh, size 18 black waltz worm. And they're loving that dropper so far. See another fish. Looks to be a rainbow right in the pool here. Here we go, here we go. Right next to him. And there we go. Third fish in this pool. I'm able to reach out over this water, present my dry dropper, and uh, let that dropper sit in place, kind of swirl around there. It's supposed to get pretty windy, and um, I usually kind of tight line nymph and uh, in the wind that can be really rough with it kind of blowing your level line all around. I put it on a dry dropper just to kind of get out ahead of the wind that's on the way. I figured why not it'd be a fun little challenge and uh, see how dry dropper really works on Tenkara. See if there's any benefits to dry dropper specifically on Tenkara versus a uh, western fly rig and um, see if we can catch some fish with it. And so far <laughs> we definitely have been able to. There's a dry fly eat. That's one of the biggest advantages of a dry dropper right there. It's the possibility of an exciting dry fly eat. Late April here, we're catching trout on dries. Not small ones either. Beautiful rainbow. Another one on fire today. These fish, they've emerged from winter and they're feeding. Cool looking fish, very dark. What a beauty. So a couple things I'm noticing already. Being able to keep my light level line over this uh, current in front of me here is a huge advantage just as it is in all other styles of Tenkara fishing. Um, normally, you know, when people are throwing a dry dropper, they've got a heavier line on, they're casting that line out, you know, a good bit further, at least a bit further, uh, but that line is heavy and it's laying 
in the currents, in the complex currents between the fishermen and their fly. And uh, that really affects the drift of the fly. With the level line here, as long as I can get close enough to uh, these pockets where I'm letting my dry dropper rig drift, I can keep that line over the current and uh, it is super effective actually. It's, it's, it's really helping out a lot. That was really wild. That fish just rose up extremely slowly, looked at my dry, ah, oh, off he goes. <laughs> he rose up, looked at my dry, about six inches above it or below it, and then he kind of just sunk back down and then he ate my dropper. <laughs> Always good giving him some options, eh? Let's hit this pocket right here. There we go. I like this spot right here, right here. There he is. There he is. Little cave dwelling brown. They're always, always chilling in spa spaces like that. <laughs> One of my favorite reasons to catch browns is just kind of being able to target them in places like that. A lot of fun. Nice little guy here. Let's push a bit farther into this dark, cracky pool here. I want to hit the soft seam all along the edge of this cliff. Definitely think we'll find some more fish. Oh yeah, here we go, get ready. It's gonna happen. There we go, little dry fly eater. <laughs> yes. Awesome day. All right, there we go. Okay, here, here's another thing that I'm noticing. The light makes it really hard, borderline impossible to see my dry fly. And I've got pretty good eyes. I can just barely make it out, but it's real easy to lose it, to have it kind of drift in and out of focus among these bubbles. And um, by using a Tenkara rig for this, I can actually keep my level line just above the water's surface, like a traditional indicator, like a tight line indicator. And if anything happens to my dry, or theoretically to the dropper below it, I'm gonna see that indicator move. So I have kind of another level of uh, protection or indication, I guess, um, when a fish is on my fly. And I think that's definitely another big advantage. Like, there you go, that right there. I, I couldn't even see where my fly landed, but I saw that line pop up. It's probably a real tiny fish. It's a real quick bite and then off, but um, I probably wouldn't have even known that that happens otherwise. You know, the more I'm thinking about this, it really is quite nice to be able to fish, the, even this spot where it's relatively calm without having to mend. I, I, think, I think this is actually pretty dang effective. I still kind of enjoy the precision of tight line and kind of being able to access fishing holes, you know, that, that would not be easy to access with, you know, with most people fishing there on dry droppers um, or an indicator and, and double dropper. Um, but it's, it's good to just play around and experiment and always have some more tools in your toolbox for sure. Because this is working great today and it's just breezy enough that it would start to get a little bit annoying with the tight line. You kind of lose contact with your nymphs a little bit easier uh, when it's windy and you're trying to tight line. You know, your, your, your line is bowing out, moving with the wind, and it's just kind of harder to tell what's going on. This, you kind of just cast it out, keep the line above the current so you can keep it as natural as possible. And uh, it's kind of like a set, and, set it and forget it. It's kind of fun. I spooked a fish there, spooked a couple of fish. Could have been my line, could have been the fly hitting the water. Kind of hard to say. Definitely makes you wonder if I had the tight line on and I was just, you know, fly first, getting that fly down very delicately, if they would have spooked or not. It is a, it is a nice sunny day. You know, me just walking through the river could have easily spooked him as well, but uh, something to think about. There he is. 
There he is, nice fish here. <laughs> or at least he's a hard fighter. You know what the worst thing about this setup so far is? It's just the way that it casts. And if it's really not, it doesn't have anything to do with the rod or the line that I'm using, I don't think. It's just kind of clunky, just casting, you know, a big air resistance, fluffy dry, uh, without a lot of line behind it to kind of punch its weight through the air. It's just, it's just kind of a chore to cast. It's not elegant. It gets out there, you know, but uh, it doesn't feel pleasant when you're casting it. I like to fish just kind of whatever works and uh, the casting feel is a bit more of a, uh, it's, it's, a it's an afterthought to me I guess. Um, but you definitely notice it fishing a dry dropper on Tenkara. Uh, it doesn't feel great. <laughs> I will say that. That's the biggest downside so far. And a lot of Tenkara traditionalists you know would definitely scoff at what I'm doing here. Um, this is not Tenkara fishing. This is simply fishing with a Tenkara rod. And um, to a lot of people, that difference is pretty important. I'm using a Tenkara rod because I think they're awesome tools. They're lightweight, they're fun to fight fish on, they're responsive, um, and they're just, they're just a lot of fun, really. But, you know, traditional Tenkara, you would not be doing this. You'd be fishing unweighted flies, subsurface typically, and um, that would be a very, very, very enjoyable casting experience. So a lot of people like that about Tenkara. I just simply like how effective it is at catching lots of fish. So to each their own, you know, but to the purists out there, I know this is not Tenkara fishing. It's simply fishing with a Tenkara rod. see some trout feeding. It's pretty deep here, maybe three feet or so. My tippet is not, not stretching down quite that low. Um, that's definitely another disadvantage of this setup is that I can't adjust the length of my dropper on the fly. It's kind of an ordeal, you know, cut off a new piece of tippet and retie. I would certainly be liking that, uh, that dropper to be a little bit deeper through here but I'm just uh, too stubborn or too stupid to, to change it up. If I was fly all season, I would have some adjustable dry droppers <laughs> rigged up, but uh, again, I'm too stubborn to tie them up. So here we are. There we go. I think it's safe to say the dry dropper on Tenkara is a viable technique. We've caught so many fish out here. I haven't really felt undergunned. I felt like it's been very effective. There's been a bit of a learning curve for sure, but uh, it's absolutely working. Just like any style of fishing, we've got advantages and disadvantages. It's all about getting out here, doing your best to catch some fish and just having a good time while doing it. And uh, that has certainly been accomplished today. Probably the nicest brown of the day here as well. Gorgeous fish, my goodness.
If you'd like to watch me fish nymphs in a different way on a tight line setup, click the video above. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.